Everybody's so quiet. I wish my children listened to that. <laughs> well, thank you all very much for being here today. Thank you also for delaying a few days. Uh, we had a little snow there. These guys weren't dug out. So uh, I appreciate your patience and being able to redo your schedules and everything of that sort. And yours also. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, before we get started, can you reach in your pockets and purses, pull out your cell phones, make sure they're put on mute uh, or turned off as to not to interrupt uh, today. So again, thank you very much to be here to celebrate this wonderful life. And uh, with that, you're on. How's that? Grace and peace to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We gather today in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to give thanks to God for the life of Judy, to receive the comfort of the Holy Spirit, and to proclaim the good news of eternal life in Jesus Christ. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Jesus said, come to me all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Let us pray. Eternal God, we bless you for the great company of all who have kept the faith, finished their race, and who now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. Especially, we thank you for Judy, whom you have now received into your presence. Help us to believe where we have not seen, trusting you to lead us through our years. Bring us at last with all your saints into the joy of your home, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now these words from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. 
He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And hear now these words from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. A reading now from the Gospel of John, chapter 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, Jesus says. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and you've seen him. And our final scripture reading comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 6. Listen now for God's word. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed, so we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also will live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains should fall into the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. Judy lived a life that could be described by these words of the psalmist. The book of Psalms itself is a collection of every kind of human experience, expression, and emotion. Songs of praise and of lament, of triumph and of defeat. They are a testament to God's capacity to encounter and accompany us along every part of the journey of our lives. This psalm recounts both a world that is unstable and chaotic and the world that is to come. The desert and the promised land. And that's where we meet today, the place between the desert and the promised land. Our grief palpable, our loss overwhelming, and yet, we know from Judy's own faith and witness that she worships this day with Jesus in the church triumphant. The psalmist gives voice where we have none, our lament for and our celebration of Judy's life. Judy McDougall was a woman of great faith. She was a loving wife, cousin, neighbor, and friend. She loved to cook 
and her French toast and sponge cake were bar none some of the best you could ever have. She doted on, and dare I say even spoiled, her younger cousins and the other children in her life. Whether it was the lavish gifts on Christmas or the giant Easter egg hunt that she and John hosted at their home every year, Judy went above and beyond to create a special and meaningful experience for all those who might be walking through her door, an expression of her gracious and loving care. Judy and her late husband, John, shared their life together for many decades before he passed away just over a year ago. They loved to hike and go sailing and to spend time with their many friends and family members. John was even known to write Judy love letters, which she had kept all her life. He truly was the love of her life. Whether her handwritten cards, delicious home-cooked meals, her vast array of family photos, or making a point to check in on neighbors, family, and friends, Judy poured all of herself into everything that she did. Her marriage and her family were certainly no exception. Judy's compassion and zest for life were a beautiful and rare combination. She was graceful and thoughtful and perhaps most of all, selfless. The life that she and John had built together was rich and full and beautiful. Once you were a friend of Judy's, you were a friend for life. She took great care in cultivating and maintaining lifelong friendships from childhood friends in Cincinnati to her young neighbors next door in Beaver Creek. She was in touch with all kinds of people from her life until the very end. In our reading a few moments ago from John's Gospel, Jesus assures his disciples that there is a place prepared for them in his father's house where there are many dwelling places, that Jesus himself has prepared a place for them. And it strikes me that Judy knew a thing or two about preparing a welcoming place for others to come and rest. She took great pride in caring for her yard, mowing the lawn, making sure to pick up all the sticks first, and planting flowers every year. She made sure also that no one ever left her home empty-handed, having a stash of things from Publisher's Clearinghouse to make sure that that was the case. Judy was a, life, or a longtime member of Westminster Presbyterian Church, and she faithfully attended as long as she was able to. She and John faithfully served and worshipped there for many years, and her church family was a great source of strength and inspiration for her throughout the years. Judy's deep faith created spaces of welcome in which the light of Christ shone brightly. And now, after a lifetime of selfless love, Judy has been received into glory with her Savior, who has indeed prepared a place for her to come and rest. Judy lived her life with grace and dignity and in the full assurance of the promise of resurrection. The Apostle Paul writes to the church in Rome about this very assurance. For if we have been united with Christ in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. This is the hope that Judy embodied in her life and greeted in her death. This is the hope which bridges the desert of our despair to the land of promised rest. This is the hope that makes today a celebration instead of a time of mourning. The Apostle Paul goes on to say, We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again, that death no longer has dominion over him. It is because Christ has been raised from the dead that we will be raised from the dead. It is because Christ can never die again that we never truly taste death. Christ has won. Death has lost its sting and life eternal reigns. We all have a lot to learn from Judy and from her life and witness. She has been a gift to her family, especially her husband and partner in life, John, whom she loved deeply. And now, Judy, resurrected with Christ, leaves all of you a legacy of life. She leaves the legacy of a life lived well, with kindness and care toward all whom she encountered. Judy planted seeds which have likely already taken root in each of you. Your family inherits a compassionate spirit, a joy for life, and a deep and abiding faith. It may help as you continue to grieve, to cherish those things, and find ways to embody them and celebrate them in your own lives. 
Yes, Judy certainly lived a life worthy of the calling that she had received through her faith in Jesus Christ. Christ who meets us here in our sadness and joins us in our celebration. Christ lives that we live, that we might live well during the time that we have here, and that we might be raised to new life in the resurrection dawn. Thanks be to God that through Christ death is not the end, and that life eternal reigns. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, before whom generations rise and pass away, we praise you for all your servants who, having lived this life in faith, now live eternally with you. Especially we thank you for your servant Judy, whose baptism is now complete in death. We praise you for the gift of her life, for all in her that was good and kind and faithful, for the grace that you gave her that kindled in her the love of your dear name and enabled her to serve you faithfully. We thank you for her kindness, her compassion, and her generosity with which she approached every part of her life. Lord, you who consoled others in their distress, draw near now to all those who mourn for Judy and dry the tears of those who weep. We thank you that her death is past and pain ended, and that she has now entered the joy that you have prepared. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand now as you're able for the blessing and benediction. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit remain with you now and always. Amen. I just want to remind everybody, this concludes the services here today. Uh, she's going to be committed on her birthday, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. On her birthday. April 26th. April 26th. Okay. So uh, thank you all very much for coming today. This does not conclude your services. Please travel safely home. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Cheryl and I had like a Oh my gosh, that's how you know. It's Oh my gosh, that's what we were all thinking. I've got 18 to call. We had to go play it. We put a snowsuit on and everything. It was too late. And we were like, I guess. And they just stand there. Yeah, they fall. I can't move it. So we went inside for a couple I would much rather you all be able to be here. I I I uh, yeah, the the old 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 okay, old yep. Uh, was with my oh, my I know I know that we all Gotcha. Okay. 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 Okay.
Okay. So they really know each other. And that's how all this happened. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He couldn't really. He was like, this isn't fun. I was digging a maze with a shovel in the backyard for my dog. Oh, we should have done that. Yeah, we can show them the shovel. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Right next door. Yeah. 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 Then I said, I was going to say, you need to have the milk cut correctly. And she eventually let me do it. Yeah, I, 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 I just dug those out. I just dug those out. Yeah. I, I think yeah, barely anything. She said they're still under there, and I did some dig, and I made. You can see I dug stuff out. So if you go by the house again, you'll see. It. But yeah, that house. Is so where do you live? Okay, so you live. Okay, so you live. Yeah, because she's a great builder. Cheryl. That's a nice Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, congratulations. <laughs> Happy day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the the yeah. 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 Yeah, very cool. Okay. And so it's literally like, so, like behind their house. So I drove around with Tom was talking to him about it. And I saw that around the table. I used to see one of the things that got the couch. And the summertime he's got He works at a
So there's only certain ones out here, then you can search for all that stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah. Two weeks for her. Yeah. 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 Oh, 
Shut up. Really shut up. So I called back to school. I talked to the best one. And then the other one. And she had to talk to the kids. 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 Just to see what they had to talk to. I was just kind of being being on my head. She didn't want to walk her to us not all. And I didn't want to wear a wig because I can have my hot flashes. I was afraid I would whip my hair off or something at Walmart and make some kid cry. So I just kept it tied up and kept my head tied up to scarf your hand in it. Um, that's she she I just I knew what she was doing They offered local driving it was just a part of the family to deal with. I was trying to go through the first two and came back from my charity. Yeah, I'm sorry. I have to stay here for four hours. It's going to take that long to get this through. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah, and Katie, she was great. Oh, cool. She was, she was, she was, she was, yeah, she was, she was really good. And that's when I got her doll. Was keep her company when I was doing treatment. If I needed to snap, she had somebody to play with inside the house. And uh, now I have a doll. She's got another doll. She's got a the first one's for Yeah, I think she's going to be stuck No, me either. Hey, great meeting you, man. Like I said, you're ready to talk about the house. I think it'll be awesome. That's why I wanted to be a blessing to hear about her. Chris is out there. She was 80. She was, she was fun. She was fun to be around. Or John. John towards the end. He was, he was, he was, he was funny. Because he was such a man. And he was even funny when we did that in the nursing home. Because it was kind of funny that we're kind of like grandparents in the nursing home. So we'd see my grandma, and we'd just go upstairs and go see John. And it's always fun to see Under those knees. Oh, really? Because him? I didn't know he shot. Oh, really? See, I never knew that. I'm a party person, I can have a It gets dark, it's a Can't wait till spring gets here. When it gets dark, I have my PBS. Two days on. Now you put them all when it gets dark, it's like six o'clock. Oh, you have a post on your PBS. Nobody's coming over. <laughs> And she was usually Thank you.
They have a ton, like I said, a kids here. I can't watch my Mary go out anymore. 
I can use Ferris wheel, but if it goes this way, that makes me sick. Okay. He's watching. Um, that's what we all want. He told me a story a couple of weeks ago. He says, probably, yeah. Oh, you can Thank you so much. Anybody else that's not in your family that you want to copy them, just send me a picture of it and I'll let them come out. I'm about it, little miss. I was like, Where's your mama? <laughs> well, which you know, when she was doing her girl and her blood, and they 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 slipped the tubes out, put the next one in, and she was trying to anchor it in place, and she just kept pushing, and I and it was the needle was in her vein, and I think the needle was coming up straight from her vein. Yeah, that was But Bobby is not the best. I, she was the only thing they won't let me because I'm not working anymore. I need a potty. Oh, there you are. I'm off the way. I was going to give him a picture. Oh, yes. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Uh, I got it. 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 I like, I want to go ice skating, but no, I can't do that because my back's too yeah. Tom wants to go skiing. He spent an hour telling me how much he wants to go skiing, where he's going to go. I said, How are you going to do that? And she's got the worst back in the world. I think I had one of my friends. I have two. I got tired of I got a new She says she had a new nerve in her neck. So she wants to move back in. You know, my hands don't reach up. I exactly want to go to the place back. I So she's going to So I'm so I got to one such a bad back. He has an mom. We need to go. He's got problems. He likes to fly. He wants to go to the Philippines and do volunteer. Yeah. Yeah, well, he has his private license. I can't think of Are you doing quilting still? I did make a uh, last 
I made one for him, the Amish with a twist. It's got a black jack. It's beautiful squares. They're this big. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Hang on to it. There's a couple things about this. I yeah, I still like to do the sewing stores, but I have so much better. Oh, thank you very much. I know. I got all the volume off on my camera. What are they? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yes, yeah.